Hello guys, how are you? I hope so that you will be fine and enjoying good health. Today I have selected a topic on polycythemia vera. So let us discuss what it is. As you know that polycythemia vera is a type of chronic leukemia, blood cancer that causes your bone marrow to produce too many red blood cells. It progresses very slowly and often it is not diagnosed until after the age of 60. Most people manage symptoms well for many years. The biggest risk from too many red blood cells is blood clots. What is polycythemia vera? Polycythemia vera or PV is a blood disorder that causes your blood to produce too many red blood cells. Too many red blood cells can make your blood thick and sluggish and increase the risk of blood clots and complications such as heart attack and stroke. It can also be the symptoms such as skin itchiness, ringing in your ears, abdominal pain, nose bleeds and blood or double vision. Polycythemia vera is a chronic condition with no cure, but medical care can help you manage symptoms and the risk of complications. Other names of polycythemia vera include primary polycythemia, polycythemia rubra vera, redema, and Osler vacuous disease. Polycythemia vera is a type of blood cancer known as proliferative neoplasm. Myeloproliferative neoplasm MPN. MPNs are a group of various diseases, some of which cause overproduction of different blood cells. A gene mutation that occurs for unknown reasons, usually sometimes during the course of your life, causes polycythemia, where they develop very slowly and often are not diagnosed until after the age of 60. This type of cancer usually is not fatal by itself. The risk comes from complications of blood clotting or from the small chance that it would progress more aggressive types of blood cancer. Who does polycythemia vera affect? Polycythemia vera is rare. It affects about 50 per 1 lakh people in the US. It's most common in people over the age of 60. How does this condition affect my body? Polycythemia vera causes your body to produce too much red blood cells. Extra blood cells increase your likelihood of bleeding, bruising and clotting. They thicken your blood and slow your circulation which means your blood carries less oxygen to your body tissues and organs than they need. They also overwork your spleen which is responsible for filtering your blood and clearing out old blood cells. This can lead it to become swollen and sore and may cause splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen. Over time, you may develop a variety of uncomfortable symptoms as a result of your condition and polycythemia vera can also lead to several secondary conditions. What are the risks and complications of polycythemia vera? Polycythemia vera progresses slowly, but overproduction of blood cells carries immediate risk from blood clots. Over time, polycythemia vera may, can, may also induce secondary conditions. It rarely progresses to a more serious kind of cancer. What are blood clots? The most urgent risk from polycythemia vera is the tendency for blood clotting. A blood clot that travels to your heart or brain can cause a heart attack or a stroke. A clot that gets plugs in your lungs will cause pulmonary embolism, can cause pulmonary hypertension leading to heart failure. A blood clot that blocks a vein, venous from embolism can cause tissue death and chronic venous insufficiency. A clot that blocks the main blood vessels leading to your liver, hepatic vein thrombosis can cause blood to back up into it to cause Bouchari syndrome leading to jaundice and liver failure. Then secondary conditions, high red blood cell turnover also produces high uric acid levels in your body and this contributes to several secondary conditions including kidney stones. When uric acid builds up in your kidneys and gout, a painful form of arthritis when uric acid builds up in your joint the extra red blood cells also lead to more stomach acid which can cause stomach ulcers the extra red blood cells triggers an immune response in your body your body releases a chemical called histamine and your stomach responds by creating more acid to fight off infection people with polycythemia vera are four times as likely as others to have peptic ulcer disease then leukemia progression. Polycythemia vera is a form of chronic bone marrow disorder or cancer which causes, which is usually uh, is not urgent threat. Uh, with regular treatment, it can be managed well for many years.
but in some people polycythemia vera does progress to other more aggressive blood disorders including but rarely acute leukemia what are the stages of polycythemia vera progression these are the stages such as early polycythemia vera this phase often has no symptoms or only mild symptoms then is second one is advancing polycythemia vera as polycythemia vera advances you may begin notice more uncomfortable symptoms or the development of secondary conditions then is the third phase is spent phase the so called spent phase of the polycythemia vera occurs when the mutated blood cells that cause the condition have grown so out of control that they have taken over your bone marrow and where blood cells grow as the mutated cells lived out their lives and broke down uh, they will replaced with the scar tissue when enough of your bone marrow has been replaced with the scar tissue it will no longer be able to produce healthy blood cells ironically this leads to anemia a lack of healthy red blood cells it also increases your risk of hemorrhage from bleeding then what is post polycythemia vera blood disorders number one is myelofibrosis the spent phase of polycythemia vera is basically identical to another type of blood cancer called myelofibrosis which is called as mf some healthcare providers makes no distinction between the two myelofibrosis occurs when mutated cells have replaced your bone marrow with scar tissue the abnormal cells may also begin to spread outside of your bone marrow to other organs in your body and myelofibrosis is another myeloproliferative disorder about 10% of myelofibrosis cases may progress to acute myeloid leukemia then there is second one is myelodysplastic syndrome more rarely polycythemia vera may turn into a myelodysplastic syndrome which is called as mds a kind of disorder in which the blood cells do not fully develop whereas polycythemia vera normally produces an abundance of red blood cells that mature normally mds causes blood cells to mature abnormally improperly and die early the inability to form healthy and mature cells causes a lowering of various blood counts can be one type of low counts or a combination mds can occur instead of a simultaneously with myelofibrosis it is more aggressive than polycythemia vera or myelofibrosis and has a 30% chance of progressing to acute myeloid leukemia then third one is the acute myeloid leukemia aml about 3% of polycythemia vera cases may progress to acute myeloid leukemia over the course of about 10 years from diagnosis acute myeloid leukemia is an aggressive blood cancer that begins in your bone marrow and quickly moves into your blood stream where it can spread to other body systems acute myeloid leukemia requires more urgent treatment than chronic leukemia but it has a high survival rate it accounts for less than 2% of all cancer deaths what are the symptoms of polycythemia vera symptoms usually develop slowly over time if they appear at all they often begin with the kind of walk complaint that are common to many disorders including the headache headedness headaches dizziness fatigue high blood pressure blood vision or double vision tinnitus ringing in your ears eventually some more curious problem symptoms may develop including excessive sweating especially at nights and shortness of breath especially when lying down itchy skin especially after a warm bath or shower redness heat tingling or burning in your hands and feet excessive bleeding or bruising nose bleeds and gum bleeding unexplained weight losses if polycythemia vera progresses to a secondary condition you may experience symptoms of that condition for example symptoms of splenomegaly which is enlarged spleen a dull ache on the left upper side of your abdomen and a bloated feeling in your abdomen feeling full after eating only a small amount being satiated earlier symptoms of peptic ulcer disease glowing uh, stomach pain and heartburn acid reflux then symptoms of gout painful inflammation in your joint stiffness swollen big toe and symptoms of kidney stones pains in your lower back or sides painful urination and frequent urination symptoms of bartchieri syndrome in such as enlarged liver causing bloating and pain in your right upper quadrant or abdomen and joint is causing yellowing of your eyes and skin ascites causing abdominal swelling and edema then symptoms of deep vein thrombosis dvt swelling and tenderness in an arm or leg redness or heat at the site enlarged veins on the surface of your skin then symptoms of pulmonary embolism pe 
sudden chest pain, breathlessness and rapid heart rate and symptoms of anemia, lightheadedness, paleness and fatigue. What causes polycythemia vera? Polycythemia vera occurs in your bone marrow, the soft spongy material at the center of your bones. This is where new blood cells grow. Polycythemia vera begins with a single gene within a single stem cell in the bone marrow malfunctions. More than 90% of the time it's a gene called JAK2. The mutated genes gives instructions to the stem cell to continually reproduce itself. All of the reproduced cells also continue to reproduce until the abnormal cells crowd out the normal cells in your bone marrow. Most of the time the JAK2 gene mutation is acquired which means it is not inherited from a family member. It occurs for unknown reasons sometimes during your life. But there have been a few documented cases of multiple family members developing polycythemia vera. Now we come to the diagnosis and test. How is polycythemia Diagnose. The World Health Organization WHO requires three separate criteria to diagnose polycythemia vera. Criteria one is by the blood test showing high red blood cell count. Red blood cells may be measured as high hemoglobin count, protein found in red blood cells, high hematocrit levels, percentage of the red blood cells, high uh, blood volume, red cell mass. Second criteria is the bone marrow biopsy showing either axis of blood cells in the bone marrow or axis of mature megakaryocytes, the cells that make blood platelets. Number third criteria is the third criteria can be met by sh showing either the molecular testing showing the presence of JAK2 genes mutations or blood test showing very low levels of erythropoietin, a hormone produced by your body kidneys to stimulate the red blood cells for their production. What is the management and treatment? How is polycythemia vera treated? In the early stages, polycythemia vera is treated conservatively. Typical treatment include phlebotomy. The most common treatment for polycythemia vera is to have regular blood withdrawals. It's the same procedure you will have to donate blood. A healthcare technician insert a needle into a vein in your arm and withdraws a small amount of blood, usually a pint. But it may vary depending on your condition. This reduces your overall blood volume and your number of excess blood cells. Low dose aspirin. This the over counter medication is commonly prescribed to reduce the risk of your blood, blood clotting. A low daily dose of aspirin helps prevent blood, blood platelet from sticking together. It can also help reduce symptoms of inflammation in your hands and feet. However, it's hard on the stomach and increases your tendency to bleed. So it may not be a good idea if you have stomach ulcers. If your symptoms have become more severe or if you have a history of thrombosis, blood clotting and are considered higher risk, you may be offered additional treatment options. Some of these include treatments to reduce itching. Your healthcare provider may prescribe medication to treat the itching symptoms of advanced polycythemia vera including antihistamines. These are over the counter allergy medications. Then phototherapy treatment combines ultraviolet, UVA, light, with a medication called Soralin, an organic compound that makes your skin more receptive to phototherapy. Then selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor SSRIs. These medications are normally used to treat depression, but in much lower doses they have shown to be effective against persistent physical irritation such as itching. Drugs that reduce red blood cell count. These may be used individually or in combination with each other. Examples include hydroxyurea, interferon alpha, roxolitinib, and busulfan. Clinical trials offer people the chance to try new emerging treatment while contributing to medical research. Some of the medications being researched include PAG interferon alpha 2A and Givinostat and Ida Senutlin. Then bone marrow transplant may be recommended in some cases. Your healthcare provider will consider several different factors including the severity of your health condition and your body's healing capacity. Then supportive care. If polycythemia vera continues to progress despite treatment, your healthcare provider will focus on relieving your symptoms. Late stage polycythemia vera is often characterized by anemia and an increasingly enlarged spleen. Splenomegaly.
and you may be treated with pain relief, blood transfusions, low dose radiation to your spleen. What is the life expectancy for someone with polycythemia vera? Recent studies estimate the average life expectancy after diagnosis with polycythemia vera to be about 20 years. The average age of death is about 77. The most common cause of death is complications from blood clots about 33%. Advancing cancers is the second most common cause which is 15%. How can I take care of myself and manage my symptoms when I am living with the polycythemia vera? If you are living with polycythemia vera, it's important to keep in touch with your healthcare provider so they can keep track, uh, track of your, how your condition is progressing and let them know how you are responding to treatment and if you are experiencing any side effects, you may continue living a long time without severe symptoms. In addition to regular testing and treatment, your healthcare provider will likely recommend general lifestyle changes to help prevent blood clots and other complications, for example, exercise. Even moderate exercise can help improve sluggish circulation Avoid smoking. Smoking causes your blood vessels to narrow. Avoid low oxygen environments. High altitudes can reduce oxygen levels in your blood. So you should avoid to go to the high altitude levels. Keep your blood pressure in check. Regularly monitoring it. Maintaining a healthy body weight gain can help with this. Polycythemia vera is a kind of cancer or a dyscrasia, but most people continue living well for decades after diagnosis. It, when it qualifies as a cancer because it involves uncontrolled cell production. However, it takes a long time for uncontrolled production of red blood cells to begin affecting you. And when they do, you can manage your condition for a long time by simply having some of your extra blood drawn. The most significant threat from polycythemia vera is not from cancer itself but from the risk of blood clots. If you are living with polycythemia vera, make sure to see your healthcare provider regularly and don't neglect taking care of your, yourself in the little ways. Healthy lifestyle habits that can help maintain your general cardiovascular health, which might turn out to be just as important as a medical treatment for polycythemia vera. So it was all about polycythemia vera and I hope so that this video will be more informative for you. And if you have liked this video, then kindly share this video with other individuals as well. And if you have liked this video, then don't forget to subscribe my channel and have a wonderful nice day. And thank you for listening and watching this video.